Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the in-house league. My name is Bahamut, one of the casters this evening, and I'm going to be joined by McIntyre. Are you ready for our best of five series between some amazing players? I am indeed tonight, Monday night in-house league. Such a such a fun time. Get to watch some competitive heroes of the storm action, um, and we have a treat for tonight because this was the first map that we're going mm -hmm. into Baja, a bit of a doozy. Yeah, we got no complaints from the players because that was how. literally us. I said I was just like, you know what? I want to make this our first map, and if the teams don't like, if we're good, like if they don't complain, we'll just go into it. And they didn't say anything. No. So that's that's it so on that note i'm literally going to push the button and we're going to go ahead and get, get into game number one here uh this is going to be the heroes hearth uh in-house league brought to you by the celebrity clash league uh -oh. and uh we are going to find ourselves here in braxis hold up for game number one and also to keep it thematic with the uh day of the day. week it is and yep. the day of the year we're going to be doing jedi versus sith so keep it semi-thematic but either way braxis hold out <laughs> New new patch. Do we still just say Sylvanas is the 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 mainstay? Like she's got a first pick for yeah. Band? I can't imagine that that character will get through in any game that we see tonight. Um, I think after watching the the past few weeks of this new tower change, it just seems like having that character exist kind of breaks the overall game itself, right? Um, with her yep. in the game, I guess it's possible to dive towers, but without it, it makes sieging so much more difficult. So I have to imagine they seem to keep banning her. Um, we see the Ana ban not uh, coming out here from the side of the Jedi's, but um, I'd say other other than her, probably see the common Zul's, the Garoshes probably on this map. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah, the other map I haven't. It's a map I haven't seen in a while too, though, right? Yeah, Braxis hold out. It definitely plays a little different, and point control is going to be a big factor here. Like this is another map where we see Cho'Gall often picked up because of the fact that you mm -hmm. can actually you're going to be having that constant you know four v four down in the bottom or wherever. And Mephisto is actually a really good ban out as well because of the cooldown reduction and the same reason why you draft Cho'Gall. It's a, it's a everyone's grouped up and fighting over a single point. You don't really want to have that stacking available for them. But things like Zul are still up and available. His push pressure is really strong. I know we don't see much of it, but Tassadar is up and available. I actually, mm -hmm. before this, I played a Q-Build Tassadar game with Black Hole, and guess what? We won. <laughs> Do you want to know why? Because I did 800 per Q, and then I could always have my Q off cooldown whenever I had my re re uh, your, your reconnaissance 100%. beam. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so it's just like... As long as I'm autoing into the wave or like autoing, I don't know. It, it was busted. It was busted. Like there was a tracer who, if I hit her with my first Q after having the uh, thermal lance at, I think it's like 13 or 16, at, uh, 16. Um, I was doing half her health bar at 16 with thermal lance with the quest halfway done. So it's just like, come on. Like on a point control based map, you can poke with so well with Tassadar. You can like you can do so much. Force mm -hmm. walls massively. On is this a massive map. advantage. On this mm -hmm, map for mm -hmm. sure. We'll see the silver. The silver's made it through here too, Baja. I don't want to take you yeah. off on a tangent. Okay. No, no, you're you're fine. You're fine. I just wanted to point out really quickly on the note of Tassadar while I was playing over the weekend, and um, I don't know if the animation happened later than than the actual like. So basically, Kier was using her grapple to get away, but there was a force wall from Tassadar, and it was on the friendly side, and they didn't grapple to it. They grappled through it. Oh. So I don't know if it was an animation thing or if it was literally just, it was just like, it just, it's not coded. But either way, Joanna and ETC going to be grabbed here, uh, left on the right-hand side. And then they have that Sylvanas as well. And you mentioned Sylvanas, really, really strong. Here. Yeah, I feel like this is like a misstep. Uh, with the Sylvanas making it through, they just need to make sure that they don't lose the objective. I think if the objective yeah. goes towards the side of the Sith, like, we'll see a massive advantage break out from that junk rat picked up and you know personally for me and gray man's very good too with his ability to do the camps but for me joanna on this map is um, not really where i want to be at you're not rotating between middle and top you know you don't have that that death ball sort of rotation instead it's a lot more posture and mm -hmm. a character like etc with his ability to sustain using his e uh, just is so much more powerful on this map. Uh, I typically like to see characters that have some sort of built-in sustain, be it ETC, Muradin, um, yeah, even like Tyrael Stitch. In a sense. Yeah, even Tyrael yeah. Stitches is another one. You know, being able to eat. Um, so we'll see how the Joanna works out. But I, I do like the two range pickups here: Junkrat for the wave clear and Grandman for the camp pressure. Um, we see the Lucio band trying to get rid of some of that movement speed and Stukov as well. Obviously, a, a really great synergy with the ETC uh, Stukov mm -hmm. combo. So, 
so far, I like the Vans. Um, I'm not really sure control. where the dra yeah, draft but... goes from here, too, though, because I would say I'd like to see more aggressive support coming out of the side of the Sith through something like a Malfurion. Ooh, a Rhaegar wouldn't be bad either. I and mean, we've been seeing Rhaegars being picked up to dive with the ETC. Mm. Um, Bloodlust has kind of been this, this, there's been there a resurgence in Bloodlust in North America. It's, it was, it was big in Europe faster, obviously than here, but like it's, it's made its way over here. So Ancestral's good too, because you, you don't have any healing uh, reduction coming out from the enemy side. There's no Ana to be picked. Deckard Kane could be grabbed if they want to go into Emerald and they want to reduce healing like that. He's also got good zone control if they want to play into that. Maybe you can use the Junkrat bombs to knock people away and you can use the Haraja Cube to slow. Maybe you have that Sapphire for that extra slow on top of it. Ooh. But Deathwing will be going into the Chen and for Healer, they're going to be going into what? Ooh, a White Mane, really? That's that's a pretty spicy Not a very one. popular... Yeah, <laughs> that's not a popular hero I see often, but like she she can have value. Like Porky actually plays her quite a bit. I think actually the White Mane is pretty cool as a counter mm -hmm. to the bloodlust so if you think about it like typically with the mm. bloodlust you want to hit it and go true white main is like very good at like withstanding that go button via b both of her heroics honestly yeah divine reckoning or uh uh scarlet agos both of them are really good options oh and yeah. we have potentially this could be a four man mathiel or huh. a solo lane mathiel um wherever they want want to put them uh i, I think it'll be it looks like Liam's going to be on it. So I assume that's going to be in the solo lane. Um, four man chin, which is pretty, pretty juicy as well. Uh, being able to just stand on the bottom point and just actually mm -hmm. hang out uh, with the Sylvanas wave clear. They might be able to push out the waves with just that. Um, Rhaegar, Lightning Shield, obviously pretty good at clearing waves as well. But yeah, this comp's interesting. I, I like it a lot. Sometimes you see comps like this. They seem good on paper and then they don't execute as well. So <laughs> I'm excited to see how this game plays out. I actually really like the the Chen because there's there's a lot of good um, like team sustain they can they can add in post thirteen if they go into that enough to share they can also go into um, Brewmaster's Balance I believe is the level one I feel I might be wrong but it's either which way is, the which regen, one is that it, the regen the regen globe quest where you need to get fifteen but and then once and then you, you get, get that, the additional. You, you get shielding sustain and it also shares to your you know oh, it, it, it persists yeah. beyond so um that way when you actually end up using enough to share you're legit still shielding your friend but either way we are here game number one on the left hand side we got the members of the jedi got filth will be on the gray main we're going to be having tremor on the joano kelsey is going to be on the junkrat down over in the bottom lane we'll be having valimar on the death wing and actually in mid we're going to be having legacy on the white main and for side of the Sith, in the red, actually, Nintori on the chin, Chijagi is going to be on the ETC, Vespertine on that, Matthiel, I think it is Porky? Yep, on the Rhaegar and Troy 1010 playing the Sylvanas. We'll see how they break open here in the be beginning of the game. This is something that already looks, um, you know, maybe this is a new Braxis playstyle. Everyone just sending their four men to the top lane. Haven't really? Seen this yeah. One before. <laughs> Legacy looks like he's they caught out here. Oh! Tori! That's a easy early game level one pickup. The the junkrat knocking into where you over able to stagger out that tower damage. Mm-hmm. That like what that's a little watch? wild. <laughs> I, I wonder I honestly wonder if it was the Sith going like, alright, we're gonna rush top lane with Sylvanas, they're not gonna expect it, it's just gonna be the death wing and we're, we're gonna be able to take a tower before they rotate. And the enemy team was probably just like, you know, they're probably gonna do exactly <laughs> that. So I, I really like how they kinda did that. But right now actually Chen getting pushed in quite hard in the top lane does need to kind of play this defensively, trying to step out and trying to bait them into hitting them so the towers do target onto them. Kelsey are taking a little bit of damage. White main up here as well. Nintori very low, does end up getting picked off as Vesper, now trying to play around their tower damage, but it doesn't look like that's going to be helping them out enough. But they are going to be up here trying to force back the enemy team. And meanwhile, in bottom lane, Valmar just trying to defend against the three down here. I think this is, might be best case scenario. Matthew would have stepped on Deathwing in lane. And mm -hmm. Deathwing being able to hold off the push while his team pushes in. Um, as you can see, just looking at the map, right? We've already gotten on a wall down. We're starting on the camp. Team fight might break out here. Trap is going to connect on a best routine. He does his best to flip over to the other side of Gotfield. He's going to go down. And Nintori staggering, walking away, drinking a little bit from that wine. Um, able to get himself out. But yeah, you can see here this this momentum is already you know in the favor of the Grey main side. Uh, potentially a fort here for a hard camp. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. 
And the objective uh, casually too. And the objective. I mean, Porky's on it. Okay, Porky's Porky, stopping okay. it. He, he's, he's, he's at least stalling things out a little bit, but they do get 22% on the side of the Jedi as they grab themselves the camp for bottom lane. Seems like they're going to cycle down here and hold control over bottom while Deathwing is just going to back off and say, I see I see your team rotating down here. I'm going to play this a little bit safer. And that actually will be the rotation coming out from the rest of the Jedi to join Deathwing. But first, they're going to grab themselves a camp for some armor reduction. And Tremor's going to step onto the point or at least harass the point for now. Yeah, Tremor getting caught out by the slide, the unsolvable paw. That's what he's probably going to kite away here. But the objective is in the favor of the Sith. Um, five men here for the Jedi is probably going to be able to break this. But Chijuggy's going to do his best, just tanking it up, knocking people away with the W. Uh, still has a slide up as well. Troy taking a lot of damage there. Does get out using that haunting wave. Uh, but yeah, I think like Val like Valmar on that Deathwing just so good at clearing waves from a really safe mm -hmm. distance. He's still full health even. Um, he's been down here the ball in the entire time. Good slide here from Chijuggy, but looks like they're now turning their focus to that bottom fort. If they can open up this bottom lane, that'll be big for them. So they're going to rotate their chin down here. They're going to jump onto the point to try and get a little bit of channel time while they are busy. ETC going to get pushed away by the concussion mine. Constant concussion mines harassing a couple of these players. Power slide from the ETC trying to step forward. And that's going to be Chen on the top of your screen actually just trying to pull the Deathwing away from the fight. Earth Shatter was used. Vesper looking for an angle to get in here. Another concussion mine won't be connecting. Chen kicks over to Legacy. Deathwing going to swap into their destroyer form right there as they lunge in with the Onslaught. Going to get themselves the incinerate for a little extra AoE damage as they're going to hold over this point, forcing back the Sith. Looks like the Jedi are going to be winning out this fight as Vesper is getting very low right now. They're going to try and make their way up, but that will be them going down as well as the Sylvanas and the... And the, uh... The and the, the doesn't Rayla. care! Yeah, Jajuggy, oh. hello? No way you make Kill it out of this. Him. No way you make it out. He's out. ETC, He's out. Can you? Can you? Can you? Then Tori's saying, I'll take your place. Oh, man. That was a great I, I actually, like, mm -hmm. the synergy between the Joanna and the Deathwing there was massive. And I'm not going to lie. I respect Valmar. He did not care. He was fearless. Yeah. Um, Deathwing doing what Deathwing does. You know, just walking wherever he wants. 5% health. Why not? I like that he also just ate the slide from ETC. Like... By the way, unstoppable. Um, really good fight. Uh, we do have the level 7 lead here as we go into this next objective fight. And Legacy might be caught out. Deathwing landing down here. Going to get a huge AoE with the Incinerate once again. Lunging forward with the Onslaught. Porky being the target as they have the spell power reduction for a couple seconds right there. Got Filth on the point, making sure they don't give over any charge. Actually going to grab it themselves as the uh, Junkrat's up in the top lane. We also have Malthio retaking that fight over in top. And seems like they're going to be able to put ETC on this point. Tremor kind of threatening on the side over here, but they get the halfway mark in favor of the Sith. But they're going to re-engage onto this on the side of the Jedi. Porky being the target. Power slide from ETC. Greyman dives out with the Dark Flight. Porky's still able to live through all of this and they are going to be able to make it back towards their fort and they're going to have to hearth back as it looks like Malthio is grabbing a camp for top but they're going to continue the pressure in bottom lane. Yeah, Tremor has to be a little careful here. He does have that negative 40 armor but Troy playing aggressive. You're trying to put in some damage on the legacy. Uh, the aggro swapping here from their side of the Jedi's really well. Uh, fort probably falling down here and maybe a 5v5 five five five, uh, fight is going to bust out. Lunging out with the Deathwing. Yeah, he's trying to use the Onslaught. Actually, no, it was on Vesper. I thought they were trying to get out of there with it. Troy, very low. Split on the top portion. Going to use the Haunting Wave to get out of this fight. Chen going to breathe some fire on Got Filth as that will be Clemency from Legacy to heal them up. And they're going to be able to disengage without losing anything on the side of the Jedi. And now both forts down. I mean, this is... Uh, I don't want to say this is a, a, a mate, but, you know... The, the map being so broken allows for the Jedi to do pretty much whatever they want, right? There's no more safety. The Cataclysm coming out from Valmar on the back line there, putting some pressure on a Porky. Vesper team potentially caught out there in the top left corner, doing his best to kite away from Got Filth. As we see Valmar on the right side just zoning four people by himself. Will he go down? He does. Vesper team on the left. Is it going to be a one for one though here? Valmar walking away, the unstoppable, knocking back Porky there from the Junkrat. And Got Filth is going to pick that kill up. Chijuggy probably having his slide up at this point. Um, this is looking like an objective. Nintori being a little cheeky. Is it going to be enough? No chance. Legacy uh, is not, there. Not with that many people. Jishuggy coming around the corner. They're going to kick towards the enemy. Another camp just to get away from that right there. Um, I do want to point out the body blocking coming out from the Sith against the Deathwing was so well played. Like, yeah, you might be unstoppable, but you aren't, you know... 
doesn't mean we can't body block you. And they managed to keep that Deathwing from getting towards their gate and worked out really well in that engagement. But we are going to see about a half a level lead in favor for the Jedi as uh, Gottfeld is a little bit low, going to get some healing from that white main and this is going to be a bit of a pause as chen kicks out tremor should be able to get back and this might be channel in their favor but only for a couple seconds on the sith as that's deathwing already on the top point 10 talent here is here in favor for the jedi and uh, they might be able to flex on this enemy team with that or they can just wait for the enemy team to try and engage onto them yeah they they need to use this level 10 advantage to get that objective not that mm -hmm. it'll even matter because it's praxis hold out and they already have 94 percent. so we got a double equal objective sylvanas yeah smiles in the chat um, but Valmar <laughs> is going to do his best here to hold this top lane. He doesn't have Cataclysm to get out, so he's just going to have to dash away there. Vespertine on top of him, doing his best. I like Valmar just saying, you know what, if you're going to suck me, I'm going to hit you. Uh, trading damage in. Um, but potentially an objective here. Again, nothing done with this level 10 heroic. Playing no, a little no. ring around the rosy duck duck goose. And Tori applying some pressure, yeah, but... hitting the stagger. And taking a sip of that wine. Oh, there's going to be a small fight in top. No, they're just going to force them back. So it will be tens up on both sides. We got uh, Keg W's in chat. And um, the only thing that I'm just curious really quickly, Scarlet Aegis for the for the white main. I always flip those two because okay. it's it's very, very close when it comes to, to the two icons. But this one is going to be uh, granting 40 armor and healing them for a little bit of a burst. And we were talking about that in chat a little bit. So, or in the draft a little bit, how it's going to be very, very powerful in something like Malthy or even just an ETC Mosh or something like that. Just, just armor in general is really, really mm -hmm. strong at this point in this game. Even when you're sieging in, you can tank extra tower shots. So we'll see how that works for them. But it's going to be 76 to 94 in our chance. This is a potential fight breaking on a top lane with Valmar landing on top of a couple players. Going to be getting that incinerate, but they back off and no fight continues. Just a little bit of a posture happening here. Obviously using that Deathwing Global. <clears throat> Already controlling that bottom shrine. So now they're going to try to fight for the top one as you see Matthew actually rotating down to that bottom objective. So it is a 4v5 here. Uh, Joanna from the side here uh, trying to find somebody maybe going on to Troy here to Juggy doing his best to zone off of the W The blessed shield is gonna connect onto the back line with the cataclysm But you can see on the left there the mosh pit dance party dance to Juggy guess what none of your friends are here He's gonna go down Valmar doing his best of 4v1 again Maybe the last rates being able to pick him up. It is Junkrat with a mind to knock back Vespertine. Is he gonna be able to escape looking to W away? <gasps> Keg W's in the chat? Keg W, right there. All caps, four letters. Dear Lord, the value from the Wandering Keg right there to save Liam, as this is gonna be first Zerg wave, first objective coming through. Um, the, the, the fort was already taken by the members of the Jedi. If you're wondering like, wait, this is first objective? Yes, absolutely. They're gonna be chasing out into this Joanna. They actually leave a lot of this uh, front gate siege coming in from the Zerg wave. I don't know if they have enough chase in this. They should just re realistically back off, but they continue. No, they're gonna back off right there. Meanwhile, in bottom lane really quickly, um, Junkrat is clearing out this and there's still gonna be one Ultralisk and the three Guardians and some, some other uh, Hydralisks around as well. So I think now the game's gonna kind of transition into the boss phase of Praxis, right? Where teams are attempting to get the boss, as you see, uh, the Sith's mm -hmm. actually set up for it um, on the spawn. It is something that can get killed pretty quickly. So if the Jedi aren't ready for it, which they're really honestly not, um, they might be able to just get a free objective here. Obviously, the Keg W is up, the Unstoppable just constantly existing on the Deathwing. And they might have just baited themselves into a terrible 13-11 fight. Uh, we'll so see is, how this breaks it is, out. It is tagged to the gray main right now because they did leash it. Oh my god, is this just a game of leashing the boss? <laughs> Whoever, who, who wants to lose, Baha? Yeah, continue yeah, exactly. to fight who, the boss. <laughs> who wants to throw right now? And it looks like neither team. Melthiel actually going to be going to the top lane to make sure that so they're going to soak up so they can get closer to that even talent here. They realize that Malthiel's up there, so they're going to pressure into this enemy team. Valmar just sitting over there waiting for the Cataclysm event to happen. They're going to get that Cataclysm right in. Chen's going to go ahead and kill Chen, and that will be uh, camp invaded on, and I don't think they continue to press into this without, without their Chen and without 13 talents here as well. Yep, alcohol poisoning taking another loved one. <laughs> um, and we see the boss actually starting here from the side of Sith. They do have the camp, the double camp in the bottom lane. Top is also pushed in, so priority in both of these lanes. Looks like this is gonna be a free boss here. Doing a good job. You remember with this boss, you know, you really, you technically wanna try to switch tank it as much as possible so that it spins. That way your team takes less damage. Um, be mindful of that when you're doing the boss on this map. 
Um, but they are going to be able to pick that up. They're going on to the flamethrowers now. Uh, be able to knock some of those towers armor because they're so aggravated at the fact that their armor is getting knocked by them. Um, <laughs> and we got a nice, we got ourselves a nice little push here in the top lane. Yeah, that comet made me just think of the the, the carbot towers. Just <laughs> <laughs> anyways. 14 to 13, it's even talent here. We got a boss sieging in through top. No camp in bottom lane any further. They're looking to go for a keep right now. This isn't going to be the Zerg wave for the members of the Jedi, but still having consistent catapult pressure through a lane is still an advantage, as well as some passive experience gain through the structure. But it doesn't look like they're going to step up any further. Going to get a huge Earth Shatter from the Deathwing, but I think they're just going to get in position and get ready for a Zerg wave to come through in their favor as the boss is cleared out and half the keep's health does remain. Yeah, and looking at builds too, we see the Deathwing going the W build as well as the Mind build actually coming out from the Junkrat, but their mm -hmm. comp is kind of built to get around this Deathwing, right? You said something about the body box before, the Chin, uh, Matthew being able to swap to the other side here. Um, yeah. Trying their best, really. You could just see it there, actually get that body block on him. Uh, Valmar able to walk away and looks like he's able to get into the air, start getting some of that health back as well, as Nintori is looking to engage on a Tremor. That was a really good concussion mine. They split them up a little bit. The curse bullet, everything being thrown onto Chen as they have to use the Wandering Keg to get out. Valmar's going to drop down from the sky. Jishaki going to get hit with the Ancestor healing as the Wandering Keg is going to come out. They're going to go ahead and drop a Mosh onto a couple players. No major interrupt as so many members are dancing and they find the kill onto the Gray Main. Last Rites goes onto Kelsey who doesn't find the kill right there. Malfield does end up going down. Porky's so very low. Find the auto and get the kill right there as Legacy finds themselves chasing into J uh, excuse me, chasing into Nintori. Jishaki actually going to get chased with the Cataclysm. It looks like Nintori goes down. Deathwing gives gives over this chase as they get the channel in top lane meanwhile there's a camp in top lane still pushing and tremor gets the channel and bottom that's going to be a zerg wave going over to the side of the jedi yeah we have we have some uh, some katas some rockets in the top lane I'm probably going to pick up that fort actually um no, never mind sylvanas is going to come and end all the fun of the top lane uh <laughs> valmar just saying you know screw it i'm just going to fight and die here possibly maybe not uh it ended up oh, sith, sith uh opting to just defend the wave, protect their fort. Uh, but it does look like the objective is going to go over to the side of the Jedis. A lot of this momentum has come from the fact that, you know, two minutes in, they were allowed to have a top fort that gained them kind of control of that top side of the map, got the bottom fort on, you know, a few minutes later, and now here we are, two objectives down, um, and a big bottom lane push coming out from the side of the Jedis. Yeah, they're all they're all set up right now for this defense, but look at the cheeky play in top lane. They're gonna just sneak up here and say, like, cool, alright, you know what? Tremor's gonna take some damage. We're gonna go ahead and get ourselves a free keep in top. And now they'll rotate down and join in with the rest of the Zerg wave, I would expect right now. But that that's actually oh a really smart God. move as Troy takes so much damage from the banelings right there. You gotta watch yourself, like those banelings. They, they really can do some caustic damage, but now the siege comes in through this bottom lane with 16 talent to your advantage in the pocket of the Jedi. Yeah, and you can see that they're slow sieging here. They don't really want to throw. They they obviously want the fort, but you know have so much control of the map that an all-out fight is maybe the only way that the Sith can come back here. Uh, just passively, very slowly doing their best. And Valmar, um, he's a player that's good enough to know that with that uh, the lava pool, he can tank aggro from the keep and, and kind of try to keep it focused on him so the minions can mm -hmm. do a better job of sieging in. But we might have a fight here. 17-15, uh, down a talent tier, but something that potentially might be the only way for the Sith to get back into this game. Nah, they're gonna power slide backwards. I'd say, I'd say this is the, that's the that's the meta of the uh, of the in-house league is you, ta down a talent tier, just fight, just fight, you'll win it, <laughs> you'll you'll win your talent tier back through the fight. Uh, if not, well, we don't consider that as an option. But anyways, they will be able to clear out bottom lane. That should get them their 16s, and this will be some more pressure coming into bottom lane from the enemy team. Uh, Camp-wise, we got a minute for the two left camps, and on the right, it's going to be about three minutes for both of those. Boss is up and available, so we could see a fight over that with 16s in hand for both. Yeah, the boss is a bit of a YOLO. I could see ETC maybe trying to get this flank pick, right? Like, um, you can see here, Troy's actually hauling waving forward. Like a silence arrow, a wailing into a slide here on Kelsier. Uh, we'll see how they really want to take this next fight. They obviously really want to fight here. Um, holding mm -hmm. in their base is just not going to work. They need some sort of a miracle, an ace, potentially a boss still. Uh, even just running it down one lane and winning some of the win conditions that they are looking for here. Um, as they position around the boss to, yeah, as I said, start it up and see if the fight can go in their favor. Did you see the concussion mine that went over the wall? Okay. 
And sh okay, okay, because that was uh, there's Valimar with the Cataclysm oh. coming in. A lot of members are getting low. Huge condemnment in there as well. Ancestor healing goes onto the Chen. The Wandering Keg's gonna be out. Etc is the first one to go down, trying to find that backline. Mosh didn't work out for them this time as Mentori needs to get some enough to share for the friendly team. Vesper tries to get on the point. They end up going down, and that's gonna be a two for none in favor for the Jedi as the Sith try and run out of here. Porky is just doing their best. Junkrat's gonna be able to chase this. Um, there's that a steel. Anyways, they've got they've got it. They've got um. God, what is the talent? Um, Ripper Air, I believe it is. Ripper Air, except Kelsier yeah. is Ripper missed his his mind, but it's all good. Uh, able Wait, to Porky, pick up. what? Porky, 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 what? Porky, what are you doing there, bud? Dying. <laughs> they were out, uh, right? Nah. Or maybe? Oh no, maybe I didn't see. I didn't see Trimmer and uh, yeah, they would have gotten brick walled by the old Trimmer. The the red well, light from space. Almost. Almost is what they're saying right now, but bottom lane does have boss coming through, and this is uh, possibly the last defense for the for the Sith on this map number one here. Is we do have the core shooting out some rockets, trying to force back the enemy team. Scarlet Agus from the white main, dear lord, the wandering keg coming out as well, splitting the enemy team. Vesper's so very low. The boss is still just just dealing damage to this core, as that will be Sylvanas getting blown up. I, she existed then didn't, and now Deathwing with a Cataclysm in, the core is falling a little more rapidly now. We do have a very low Jichuggy on the bottom of our screen who's just trying to play, looking for an angle. No mosh pit available for them as the Riptire comes out. That's Malthio going down, Valimar so very low, and that is going to be game number one going over to the side of the Jedi GG. Well played. I'm going to be honest, Paul. I was trying to figure out why I heard fireworks outside, and it was actually <laughs> just the core yep. shooting rockets. So, excuse me? Uh, interesting, it's, uh, it's interesting a, it's, it's sound a, choice that they've gone. Every now on on Hanamura Temple, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, because like, you, I don't know, just I don't, but like 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 fireworks. Because that that whole map like has that, but like, like bottle rockets, right? Exactly. Yeah, that 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 has like because it also relates back to like the tank shots because they're like little uh, they're like bottle rockets that fire like dragons or something like yeah. how the towers shoot them. So like that has like a correlation. This one is just like. M missiles that come out like does the boss oh, this shoot missiles? Defensive, like core. Like why not? Why not? Why not structure? shoot out? Why not shoot out Zerg or something? Why not throw out Banelings or you know I don't know. Bottle rockets, not bottle even, rockets, not even missiles. Just bottle rockets is what we're shooting. <laughs> but uh, that's gonna be game number one going over to the side of the Jedi's. Oh, well, I asked the well played, well played. We're gonna be picking up the next map here. Looking over some talents for you guys. I don't think really anything was super out of place here. Everyone's playing pretty standard. Um, Vespertine did opt to go Massacre, which I guess makes some sense. He's he's trying his best to dot a lot of their team and get you know get bigger drains. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that's about the only talent that's a little out of place that we don't typically see. I I, I respect Chijuggy for going Hamron, but I don't respect him for taking Block Party. Uh, he really could have done a better job sustaining himself with that level one guitar hero Harp talent, rock, yeah. or oh. you know, yeah, guitar hero. So I'm, okay. uh, I'll continue to harp on guitar hero. I think it's broken, um, and basically it allows I... you to, it, it allows you like to ignore Greyman's damage. Like while some people would say, well, block party, you know, it allows you to ignore his damage too. Um, there, there's like a lot of magic damage in the game that guitar hero would just also allow him to ignore you know um i'm just a big fan of the talent i guess 